Bobby had a successful playing career. I mean, he went to two World Cups, the 58 and the 62. He was a fullback. back uh, He played for Fulham, uh, played alongside Johnny Haynes there, who he said was the best player he'd ever played with. And uh, he had, like many players who went on to become managers at that time, had a very successful uh, career as a player. I think Bobby Robson was uh, first turned on to the idea of coaching and management by um, watching the 1953 Hungarian team beat England 6-3 at Wembley. Uh, he was in the crowd there and he said it was like a, a life-changing experience where he suddenly became interested in how people played abroad and how players could be improved. And after that he went and uh, studied coaching at Lillishaw under Walter Winterbottom and uh, actually became one of his disciples. I think he described him as being uh, like a prophet. And he really opened Bobby Robson's eyes to the idea of not just tactics, but improving players with, with technical coaching. Bobby had a, quite an up-and-down uh, career with England, which people forget, uh, given that his last act was a, a losing semi-final in 1990. It started really badly with failure to qualify for the Euro uh, 84 championships, where the famous 1-0 defeat at Denmark. But he moved on to Mexico World Cup in 1986, where England did very well, and of course were perhaps unlucky to be eliminated by the Hand of God goal in the quarter-final against Argentina. 1990 really made him, actually. It was a very important tournament for him. He already announced he was going to leave the England job before the tournament. And he discovered a really good blend of young players and old players. I mean, he obviously famously brought Paul Gascoigne into the team. There was a friendly at Wembley where Gascoigne put on an amazing performance in a 4-2 win against the Czechs. And Robson was brave enough to play him in his midfield. Well, after Italia 90, he, of course, went to PSV, where he did quite well, although his legacy is quite mixed, partly because of the kind of quotes we like to recycle in this country from some of his players, who talked about his presumed tactical incoherence. But he actually did very well at PSV. That's where he also discovered Ronaldo, who was, who was a player he then took with him to Barcelona, or at least signed at Barcelona. Barcelona was obviously a, a huge job for him and, and the biggest club job that Bobby ever had. And of course, while he was there, Jose Mourinho was his interpreter and became a very good friend of his and also someone who was very influenced by Bobby Robson. Bobby uh, went to Newcastle when they were, in, as ever, in need of a safe pair of hands. Not only was he very popular, he actually did very well, I mean, particularly when you look at where the club is now. He took them into the Champions League, uh, took them in one season to second uh, in the Premier League, and uh, it was a happy squad under Bobby. He had some very good players there and there were some very memorable nights. I suppose the interesting thing about Bobby Robson is he perhaps didn't have the most successful managerial career, but what he did have was an incredibly long career. He was someone who stayed through several eras, who was very interested in coaching, was one of the people who really brought that idea to the fore in this country, and who also was widely loved and widely respected, didn't make an enemy in the game, and wherever he went seemed to, to generally improve things.